So in today's video here on YouTube, something, again, completely different. Um, I, I obviously love Mercedes as uh, an old Merc guy. I've owned them for decades um, and a great fan. And I've got I've got a 123 200D myself as well as a C180 at the moment. But I also love... I love simple, honest cars, and today, um, today's video is on a Volkswagen Fox, actually a 1987 Volkswagen Fox, which a South African Fox, another in Brazil as well, a different car. Um, it's it's for all intents and purposes a Mark One Jetta um, that carried on being produced here in South Africa, and it's an automatic, and it's a survivor car. It's the car behind me here. And I'm going to take you for a drive with Bella, uh, my daughter, and also I'll do a walk around on it and have a look. What beautiful condition. And if you too have a car uh, that, that you think might interest me and that you'd like to showcase, showcase on my channel, please just get in contact and, and we can make it happen. Enjoy the video. So, so this is a 1987 uh, Volkswagen Fox. Um, it's a South African only model. Um, it's based on the City Golf. The the uh, to you that aren't in South Africa and aren't familiar with the City Golf, it's um, the the Golf Mark One, which of course was discontinued when the Golf Mark Two was launched in Germany and elsewhere in the world in 1983. Well, here they carried on making them as the City Golf. Um, alongside whatever current range of golfs that were right up till 2009. So a production of around 25 years here in South Africa, incredibly enough. And the reason I'm driving this car today, uh, the owner offered me um, the, the, the chance to take it for a drive, and I, I just couldn't miss it, uh, the opportunity, because you really see um, what was essentially the cheapest automatic sedan in South Africa in 1987. It cost 17,500 odd rand back then. You really see them in this original condition. And uh, the story behind this car is that um, it was bought new by the current owner's mother-in-law. And he bought it from her when she stopped driving in about 2017. And he's had it since. And um, it's done just over 100,000 Ks. It's got the original cluster. He changed this cluster because this one reflects a little bit more. But um, he wanted the rev counter, and as he didn't want to sell the car, he just he, he suited and he kept the original cluster. Uh, as you would imagine, very basic spec, but I'm actually surprised at how well it drives. Um, driving here to uh, to come and connect Bella to help um, film the video, um, I went on the open road at about 120, and it actually feels remarkably refined. It's nothing like the city golfs I remember driving. Um, in the early 90s. Um, so yeah, it's, it's <laughs> surprisingly nice. Um, so anyway, getting back to what it has and what it doesn't. Well, what it has got, it's got a heater, it's got windscreen wipers, it's got two mirrors and a rev counter. And that's it. But it's also got a bunch of reliability and a bunch of simplicity. These cars go forever, honestly, and they're as simple as they come. And because of the long production span here in South Africa, spares are plentiful and it's easy to upgrade and a lot of guys do. Uh, we, we got the dash out of, I think it was the Sears. Um, so, so the last City Golfs here in 2007 um, actually had a, uh, actually, sorry, 2009, actually came with a driver's airbag, unbelievably enough. Um, so you have very, very interesting history here in South Africa and um, just such a nice little car this. And as you can see around traffic, I mean, it's, well, around traffic, around the suburbs, it's really, really nice. It's, um, it pulls, it's very responsive, a very, very nice car. Um, but I'll take a walk around and you can have a look at what it looks like. And then we'll go on the open road and I'll show you how it performs as well. portion of this video we at grass reef here in um in sards in port elizabeth great restaurant if you ever find yourself here you've got to come here the pizzas bella and i are here every friday having a pizza i get my bread the 
got a brilliant bakery here. The new child that says, please, you got to stop in. Grass Reef. They're on CV Road, corner, what is this? Heron, I think it is. Mm. Anyway, you can't miss it. Just Google Grass Reef and you got to come. But anyway, getting back to the car. So just such a beautiful Survivor car. But even the original wheel caps are still there. Um, you can see it's never been sprayed or anything. That is how they came with these stickers over here. The amazing thing is that back here in the early 80s, as the Hardy Dars land here, back here in the early 80s, um, a car like the City Golf, the cheapest sedan in South Africa, automatic sedan in South Africa at the time, has got two mirrors. Yet Mercedes, <laughs> well, until the 124s came, we had to pay for a left mirror if we wanted one on a 123. And a 115, well, you just couldn't get it. Um, these came with the, this may or may not be original. I don't think the automatic had these, but it was a very common upgrade back in the 80s. You'd get these from auto styling or whatever with the Heller, Heller spotlights here, the driving lights. But some of them did. Uh, certainly some of the City Golfs had that. Uh, I don't know, for one, the GTS and obviously the GTR, and later the CTR, they all had those. Uh, this has still got the earlier bumpers. Now, stand to be corrected, I can't really remember, but this dash carried on until around, I actually don't know, uh, carried on, I think, till around 2000, and then they upgraded to a seat dash, a CF dash, um, from, I can't remember, but I'll put it in the comments. And uh, the very last, as I said, the very last City Golf here in 2009 actually had a driver's airbag as well, which is unique in the world. Nowhere else uh, could you get a City Golf with a driver's airbag. Look at the condition of the seats. See how there's a couple of tears, but the tears are on the seams over here. It's the original upholstery, and that's what I love about this car. Nobody's messed with it. The original upholstery, and that over there can easily be stitched back together at a decent um, auto upholstery place. A little bit of rust starting here on the boot. Uh, but I believe the owner, the owner said that he is addressing that. It's interesting as well that uh, on the Fox, uh, because the Jetta didn't have that, the Jetta had a, a, a reverse light that was incorporated in, this, in the tail light cluster. In the Fox, they moved it to the bumper. Uh, there must have been a cost reason for that. Bear in mind, these were sold alongside the Jetta 2 uh, here in South Africa. And obviously here we had the full range of Jetta 2s right up to the 16-valve um, the 2-litre. Um, so yeah, these were sold alongside that as a budget alternative. Huge boots. And um, that was really the reason for this car existing. Uh, just a lot more practical than the hatchback that was the, the City Golf. As you see, they've even got inertia reel seat belts at the back. Uh, Three-point belts at the back. And let me open the engine bay here. I must say, I love these little things. These little covers that go on the inside of the um, the door handle here. And the one, the one problem with the City Golf, I remember, is if it didn't have it, as you open the door, your nails would always catch there. And scratch that little portion of the the door so this was a very common option that people took or upgrade and i remember my mum in Bintuk in 1979 got a, a 1.5 gls golf one and uh, that had chrome ones here that was a dealer option that uh, that she had put in just to stop those scratches so common easy fix okay so a very, very simple engine, uh, lots of space, just a 1.6. They used this for years in a variety of things. I stand to be corrected, but I think it even went into, without any changes, into the Jetta 2. Um, Three-speed automatic box, as I said. And yeah, simple as it comes. Easy to work on, lots of space. Parts are dirt cheap. I did actually have a City Golf. I had a City Golf. Somebody traded in a City Golf back in 2014, somewhere around there. And uh, I bought it, it had a cracked light, it had a bumper that needed to be replaced, it had a bunch of things that needed to be done. So I thought, okay, well, I'm probably in for three or four thousand rand to do all these things. And I went here to our local Volkswagen specialist here, Tricor here in P, um, in Victoria Drive. 
And man, I bought everything that I needed and it was under a thousand rand. I couldn't believe how cheap parts are and how easy it was to find absolutely everything for these cars. Another common issue with them, as I remember it, is the door handle failing. This over here, this little handle. So you see so many of them with, with that broken. And, and that was honestly back then, I was speaking 2014. Man, if it was 200 rand for a replacement door handle, it was a lot of money. So really a budget car, spares freely available. And, and just what a pleasure to see a survivor like this in such good condition. I mean, the paint works beautiful. Uh, the car spent, well, the original owner, the, the, the current owner's mother-in-law, uh, was in Craft Renette, so it was, it was up there. And it's been down here garage since 2017. So the condition just reflects uh, how it's been looked after. I'll show you here as well. Everything is here, all the books, the instructions, ma instruction manual in both uh, bilingual as well, English and Afrikaans. With all the services here as well. Yeah, how beautiful is that? In a budget car. Sure, you get Mercedes's with that sort of provenance, but an old bottom of the range automatic to find that just don't see it anyway enjoy the video and uh, yeah if you're enjoying it subscribe and if you've got a car that you would like me to drive please and showcase for you please just get in contact with me and um, yeah, let's get on to that uh, that acceleration test and see how it goes that uh, from 80 to 120 Okay, so as we approach the, the start of um, CB Road here, a bit more of a rural road, um, chugging along at 60, and we get it up to 80. There we go. And it's revving at about 2,500 revs at 80. Let me go. Hundreds. And at 120, it's just over 3,500 revs, so it's not frantic or anything like that. I'm going to slow down to about 100 and just chug along at that. It's at 103,000 revs. And sure, it's a bit noisier than a modern car or a Mercedes of a similar age, but it was, a, it was the cheapest automatic car available in South Africa at the time. So it is a budget car, and yet it's perfectly usable. Uh, I'm very comfortable where I'm sitting here. I could easily get it in and do a long trip. I'm sure there's a lot more wind noise, but it's a 50 year old design and, and you know, wind insulation and the road noise is just not a priority. What was a priority was economy and cheap, uh, cheapness and, and affordability of servicing of parts. And that's really what this car is about back then and, and even today. You know, finding an original survivor like this. As you can tell from the Warcraft video that we did on it, uh, the Warcraft portion of the video, I mean, it really just is a survivor car. And it's, it, what a pleasure to see something like this. What a pleasure. Okay, so this is the portion of the video where Bella takes the car for the drive. <laughs> Bella, have you ever driven a City Golf or, well, not a Fox, but an mm -hmm. so City Golf? Nah. You know, your mum actually had one mm. back in 1991. Um, you won't believe she actually won a City Golf, a 1.3 City Golf in a competition. I'm going to check with her what it's for, but I think it was a perfume. Somebody in a shopping centre confronted her and said, "What does this perfume smell like?" And she had some uh, some description there that 
that ended up winning her city golf. And Blue and White won 1.3 city golf. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so how cool is that? Anyway, what do you think? It goes nicely. Eh? Yeah. I haven't driven one before. Can you believe how well it drives, actually? It is surprising. <laughs> <laughs> and the seats are like super comfortable, actually. Mm. It's a nice interior. Cyclist in the middle of the road. That's the idea. Yes. Yeah, actually, a nice little car. It's a nice interior. It's, I'm actually fine here at the back um, as well. Now I try and turn it around. I mean, look, uh, I've got a bit of space to bump my dog in here. My knees as well. It'd be fine. There's enough leg room here. My feet go underneath the chair. So I'm pretty comfortable. Three point seat belts at the back. You're overtaking. Oh, you've been overtaking. Well. Oh. Fan blows cold day on me. Yeah, that works. Mm. I don't think it's got an aircon. Feels but, like it could be. Uh, yeah, it's been cold and peach. <laughs> <laughs> Try it another day. But uh, I, I, you know, there were one or two that came with aircon, uh, but I don't think it was ever standard on any of them. I uh, remember your uncle had a CGI back in back in uh, back in must have been about '93. And uh, I had a Uno Turbo at the time, and I always used to race him um, <laughs> in his, in his uh, CTI. CTI was, of course, a 1.8 fuel injected. It was the City Golf version of the, uh, the Mark 1 GTI. Uh, really nice little cars as well, really zippy, but um, yeah, you couldn't catch me in the Uno Turbo ever. <laughs> <laughs> As you drive down Sardinia Bay Road here. So, in summary, Bells, what do you think? I think it's a good car. What impresses you on it? It's comfortable. Okay. And it drives nicely. Yeah. I don't know how much they go for. I don't often look for them for sale. Yeah, look. Um, so, I don't know how easy they are to find or. Yeah, in this sort of condition, very, very hard to find. Mm. Um, I don't think they're particularly expensive, but in this sort of condition, who knows? Maybe. Um, yeah, you're just not going to find it. You know, <laughs> the cheapest car on the market is always the car that, uh, um, you know, this is the sort of car that a rental company like Avis would buy uh, mm -hmm. back in the day, or budget or whatever, and then buy it just to be able to offer their clients an automatic car. Um, so, you know, that sort of category of cheap car uh, in automatic, well, this would have been what it was. Um, so very, very few of these survived. Nobody bought these to, uh, to preserve um, and uh, look after in this sort of condition. It just didn't happen. You know, there were, there were rental cars or there were fleet cars or uh, somebody that just, you know, needed a car to drive around that was cheap. And um, yeah, so finding it in this condition, very, very special. Beautiful part of PE, this lovable park. Anyway, I'll stop talking now and enjoy the drive a little bit. And uh, thank you for watching the video. Yeah. This is a incredibly <laughs> steep hill, and it, and it actually pulls quite nicely up here. Yeah. I once came up here in a 240D, and I, I couldn't make it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't actually in that particular car. I had <laughs> to go back. And the, the problem is that your your one doesn't make that hill. It can, but not easily. With a run. Yeah. The problem is there's a speed bump at the bottom of the bloody hill. Mm. So you know if you cane it and you hit the speed bump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this side ever doesn't have that problem. Mm. Nice.
so just as I carry on driving this uh, this 1987 Volkswagen Fox, uh, which was initially the uh, the Jetta, um, so the, the the Golf Mark One with the boot, basically the first first uh, series of Jettas. Um, yeah, so 1.6 carb. This one has it was the only one that came in automatic here in South Africa. Uh, 1.6 carb and around 60 kilowatts, I think it is, around 123 newton meters of torque, but I stand to be corrected. 60 kilowatts, I know the torque I'm not that certain about. And, um, and it just really drives very nicely. I can't believe it. It's got such a smooth gear shift and so much torque low down that you don't really need to do anything but just chug along. Really a beautiful car. And the simplicity just uh, just uh, is is the best feature for me. And the availability of parts. As we drive around a different area of Port Elizabeth, my um, back today, uh, the old Merkau warehouse is about three or four kilometers as the crow flies. We're driving around a, a, a suburb called Lovemore Heights, beautiful area, um, which I don't know well. I think this is a dead end. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, we can maybe. No, we can do it. We can go around here. Uh, with the sea there in the distance. But here again, just watch the, you know, if you're just, if you're pulling away and you're just driving gently, I mean, look, try and watch the shift. Look at that. So smooth, eh? I'm surprised. I'm surprised, actually. But what an unusual survivor car. And it's got all its books. Oh, speed bump. Unmarked speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was drama free, it braked well. <laughs> and you know, it's actually. I another one. Another one coming up. Oh, they really should paint these things, eh? Mm. Well, the problem is that traffic circle at night, if you're caning it up this road, which you shouldn't be. But if you don't see it, you've got to launch yourself, eh? Look at this. Um, but you are little things. Teach the speeders a lesson, eh? Mm. Um. Yeah, I haven't driven a City Golf for must be 35 years, 30 years maybe, somewhere around there. And yeah, obviously, uh, in the way of safety, uh, there's nothing. <laughs> uh, it's it's from a different area. I mean, these things came out in Europe, I believe, about 74. So yeah, close to 50 year old design. Well, it is a 50 year old design. And um, yeah, so that wasn't really the thing, but it is light. And the power that is there is very, very usable. And I thought it'd be heavy in traffic. It's not at all. It's a really lovely car to drive, these little little city girls. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the video. And if you have a car, an unusual car from the 80s or 90s, or even a newer Merc that you'd like me to um, uh, show on the channel, please get in contact. I'm based down in Abeja. And uh, I'll happily take it for a drive and do a video on it, um, just for fun. And if you enjoy the channel, please subscribe.